Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next base destruction video, and we'll get into this Town Hall 9 in a moment, but for right now, just want to talk about the new series. Uh, got a great response from you guys. You guys like it. Um, it's kind of an addition, so it's not taking up the slot of any other series. So I think, in general, it's good to have more content. So but pretty much the response was positive, but uh, one thing was I should talk slower, and I'm going to do that. I wanted to keep it like a... a a short video. I don't want it to turn into a two, three minute video because then it just kind of turns into a regular video. And I want to keep the series kind of unique where you can go in, you know, watch under a minute of content and kind of get get a few tips that you maybe you didn't know and kind of on the daily, daily thing. Uh, but I'll talk slower. It might make the video take a little bit longer, but that's just the sacrifice I have to make. Uh, I can't be perfect. So uh, I'll, I've, I've read your comments. I've responded to them and I'm addressing what you guys are saying. So thanks for the feedback on that one. But anyway, uh, we're talking about a base from the last arranged war against Reddit Legacy, uh, number 12. This base uh, held up against two attacks before it was finally three-starred by the third attacker. And we'll take a look at how it's set up, kind of why it's set up that way, and uh, how this impacts the attack. So the first attacker used an air attack. So for this, we'll just take a look at it from the air perspective first. Then we'll talk about how it's set up for ground a little bit later. But anyway, um, from the air perspective, pretty solid. Um, these two air defenses are the main thing to be exploited. They're just a little bit too close to each other. And at that, they're also close to the queen. So that's kind of adding another little uh, layer of trouble uh, for this base as far as defending goes. Uh, these two t Teslas, when you don't know they're there, they can kind of screw up the balloon pathing, uh, make it a little bit harder to get into those air defenses. So that can hurt if you come in on it with a, a La Luna on the backside of the base. But anyway, um, taking a look at what the first attacker did, we'll just get into that now, I guess. Uh, the first attacker came in with two golems, uh, right like that, just a, uh, what is it, shattered Laloon, uh, wizards creating the funnel, everything like that, wall breakers in here, and then kind of just lets everything, well, I guess I should say wall breakers in more like right here, and just kind of lets the heroes, the two golems, and a few wizards move into there. Uh, it works out nicely. The, the idea, I think, was for the queen to shoot down both the enemy queen in that compartment because she'll jump into there and then the air defense in this compartment. And there'll be a... I'll go ahead and change the color. Uh, there'll be a jump spell to let the king keep moving forward. Um, there's a few problems, though, with this attack. And this kind of goes back to a point I want to make about kind of air attacks in general after the update. Basically, what happens here is... One thing is the golem here doesn't reroute back on in. It gets stuck on the wall here because I guess the, the air defense is the next thing that it should have targeted, but it was just too deep into the base because this mortar right here goes down. So that one golem is stuck beating on the wall right here. It doesn't get a whole lot of value. And the one golem that does go in gets kind of burned by the CC troops. The poison did slow down the Valks and the goblins and the CC, but uh, they still got a little bit of damage on the, the golem, or quite a bit of damage, I should, should say and the golem goes down somewhat quickly. So it uh, doesn't get huge value uh, from his from his golems. They're not tanking for that long. Misses the king's ability, and, and that's huge when you have a level 30 king. To miss his ability, uh, you're, getting, you're missing out on the barbs, the extra damage, the health boost, just a lot of stuff. So uh, the king, who would have gotten in here and gotten probably the Teslas, goes down before he can get that. Uh, so that does not help at all. Pops the queen's ability. She takes out the... Uh, enemy, enemy queen, air defense, air defense. So it gets kind of the three important things, obviously the CC troops included, but the three main things when you come in with the Shattered Laloon, the queen, and two air defenses go down. Uh, the problem is there's nothing for cleanup. There's the lava pups, and I, I forget if you had a wizard or not or something, but that's it. And at this t time in the game, you kind of need your heroes for cleanup unless you just crush the base and have a ton of lava pups because... When you get the queen and the two air defenses taken out, if you deploy your uh, Lava Hound balloon attack correctly uh, on the remaining two air defenses, you can get all the defenses down. And he does. He get, comes in here, even though didn't get great value, got the three important things he needed, comes through like this, gets everything taken out, but because the heroes are up, runs out of time at about 80%, wasn't terribly close. Uh, so it, it was a good attack, good plan. I think missing the, missing the king's ability hurt, the golem not coming back in hurt, and that caused the queen and the, everything in the kill squad to go down 
uh, before the air portion of the attack came through. And when you don't have your queen for cleanup, that can really hurt an air attack because the pups don't do a whole lot of damage. He didn't have a whole lot of them left. And the balloons are obviously extremely slow. So I think that was the main deal breaker. Just the kill squad went down. And uh, when you're planning this, you want to go in there with your kill squad, get the job done, get the two air defenses, get the queen, get a few extra things if you can. The CC troops, obviously. But you want to start the Lava Hound part of the attack so that your kill squad is protected and that your queen's going to stay up for cleanup because with three minutes, you don't have a whole lot of time to get the attack. So anyway, let's take a look at the attack. Then we'll come back and talk about the next two attackers. Okay, here we go with the attack. It was by Yeyer. Uh Comes in here, like I said, uh, has five haste. So haste are pretty good with your balloons at this point in the game. If you have a group of, like I've said, two balloons or more, they can take out pretty much any defense besides an expo. And uh, you don't need the extra damage, so the haste works out great uh, for, the, for the balloons at least. But anyway, comes in with the two golems. Uh, placement was great. The wall breakers were great. For whatever reason, that golem does not go back in. And actually, that mortar was still up. That must have been some kind of glitch in the golem's AI, I think. Because that mortar looks extremely close to it. Not sure what's wrong with that bottom golem. But it's beating on the wall, and uh, the mortar goes down. It's certainly not going to go to the air defense if it doesn't go to the mortar. Uh, pops the queen's ability. She gets the defensive queen taken out. Right here, you can see the king has a perfect shot in there to get those uh, two Teslas. Get possibly even the sweeper if he pops the ability early enough but doesn't, and uh, those two Teslas are still up. The Queen's gonna go down pretty quickly with that damage coming at her, and then here come the Lava Hound. Deployment's great. You can see how much the base is still left up, but the deployment of the Lava Hounds is what really saves the day. The balloons come in under the haste, getting everything taken out. Uh, those Teslas do pop on the outside, which are a bit of a speed bump to the balloons, but uh, they're not that big of a deal. Uh, he'll send a few more balloons to get those when the time comes. Here come the haste, though. Just dousing these balloons in haste, uh, making sure they're moving throughout the entire base, and uh, that helps counter the air sweeper. The golem actually does get in there and get the air sweeper taken out, so nice job by that last little golemite right there. Uh, balloons making their way through. It'll take out these last few defenses and get over to the Teslas, but you can see here, um, doesn't have a whole lot of lava pups, just the way it happens. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't, um, but doesn't have a whole lot, and the balloons are still up. Unfortunately, they're chasing that king around, so the balloons are just kind of wasting their time on the king. And you can see how much of this base is left up. Doesn't have any wizards or anything. Um, typically you want to drop two balloons or something and uh, bring some wizards because, like I said, I've made a video on the last video of time savers. You got to, you know, pay attention to time and clean up because the defenses are all down, but there's just no time to get everything else. So it would have worked out better had the queen still been up or at least the king or something. Uh, good attack to Yair. Uh, good game plan. Let's go ahead and see what the next attacker did. Okay, so the next attacker, I believe, is Rigo, and uh, he comes with this base a little bit different. He uses some ground some ground troops, and taking a look at this base, kind of how it's set up and everything, the double giant bomb spot's kind of in a weird place. It's right here, which is, first of all, it's kind of near the queen. I mean, it's just one compartment away, and it's also not the best pathing because you can come in here, take out these two, go there, and then from there you can trigger it, so... Maybe a pack of like six hogs, to be honest, could probably get in there and trigger the double set of giant bombs. So not the best layout there, but it can surprise attackers, especially when you don't know where they are, because the air attack didn't reveal a whole lot. It just showed this one giant bomb spot. So uh, Rigo, I, yeah, I think it's Rigo, doesn't know where the, uh, where the rest of the giant bombs are. So coming at this base, he just decides to mass Valk it. And uh, that can work pretty well. Um, another thing about this base is taking a look, if, if even if you know the double set's here, if you come at it like this to try to get the queen in the, in the giant bombs, which is pretty logical because uh, they're exposed, you know, just in that first compartment, you can get in there and get them. The problem is this isn't that hog friendly to send things in that way. There's skelly traps in here, there's spring traps, two giant bombs, so you're going to need two separate heals. Um, your hogs just aren't going to be able to uh, get through it most of the time and that makes it difficult because I mean you have to send something in here uh, to get this neutralized in some way and you have to get the queen too however this area is pretty hostile to uh, to hogs so it makes you in a bit of a tricky situation we'll see how the third attacker deals with that uh, soon but um, Rigo also has a nice plan and it would have worked but there was a few problems with it which we'll talk about 
mainly he just sends in these Valks right like that. He has about 18 Valks, just decides to do a mass Valk attack on it, creates the funnel, no golem, um, and I, I agree with that decision. People sometimes bring one, even two golems with their Valks, and that's not the best idea, especially if you're going to bring like eight Valks or more, because the Valks get so far ahead that the golems aren't really tanking for that long. Um, I It makes sense to bring one golem, especially if there's a lot of point defense uh, right at the start to help create the funnel and kind of survive that first compartment to let the Valks have a little bit of uh, time before they start taking damage. But besides that, the golem really isn't that necessary uh, in these Valk attacks. And I think it's good that Rigo doesn't bring... He doesn't bring a uh, a golem because the funnel is pretty easy to create. doesn't even have to wall breaker in. That compartment's just already open. So uh, the funnel's created. Pretty much all the Valks go in. I think a few troops do go to this outside, but the vast, vast majority go in. Um, he has two jumps, which are going to go down here and I believe like right here. Just to let these Valks access the entire base pretty much. And then has a few defensive targeting troops like some balloons for here. Uh, I think he has a few balloons for up here. The plan's really good in my opinion because he's going to go through, get all these air defenses, uh, sprinkle in a few balloons and a few hogs for what's needed. But the main problem here is he doesn't heal his Valks. Um, he brings two heals and those are intended for the Valks, but he drops them way, way too late. And uh, if the Golem was out there, if he brought a Golem, he could have gotten away with waiting a little bit longer. But if you're going to bring the, you know, all those Valks, you got to heal them up, especially when they're taking all this damage. You can see here, just they're surrounded by damage as soon as they enter in that little compartment there. So those Teslas, the giant bomb, his first heal doesn't go down to right about up here. Um, and the, by then, he's probably lost half his Valks, maybe more. Um, the heal probably needed to go down somewhere in this area as soon as they got into that elixir storage. And then probably should have healed up again here. And okay, he doesn't have a heal for this area, that's true. But by that time, most of the defenses are down. It's kind of end game stuff. He has the defense targeting troops like the balloons and the hogs coming in. So you want to heal those Valks earlier rather than later because you can't heal a dead troop um, better, better sooner than later. Always remember that, especially when you don't have a golem. Those Valks aren't nearly as tanky as they used to be. I think they got two nerfs on their hit points. So they're quite a bit squishier. Um, doesn't heal the Valks. We'll take a look at the attack was a good plan. I, I like the plan. I think it could have worked just late on the heel. So we'll take a look at it. I'll be right back with the attack. All right, here goes Rigo going in against this base number 12. And uh, like I says, like, sorry about that. Like I said, has the, uh, well, actually more than 18 Valks. I think he has like 20 when you count it all up because he has the uh, 18 of his own plus three from the CC. So mass Valk attack. Um, and I love it. I, I think it's it's, it's great. It's going to get a lot of value. I think this is a very powerful strategy. And uh, obviously, I've talked about how Valks should be nerfed. But as long as they're like this, might as well take advantage of it. Uh, but look at all those Valks. A few of those, the ones from the CC, do go off to the side here. Uh, but right here, look at this. They have to deal with the CC troops. A few Valks of the defensive CC get a few swings off, splash damage. They come in here. They have the Teslas, all this point defense, the King, that giant bomb that's going up. Still not healed up yet. Uh, they're just taking a ton of damage. And... Uh, Pops the queen's ability. She actually goes down right here. It's just kind of unlucky. But by the time that first heal was down, I think he has closer to five or six Valks left up. And that's just not going to be enough to get through the rest of this base. Poisons the queen. That's great. Everything's making its way through as it should have. But you can see how much slower everything's moving. Uh, the king's ability is a little bit late too. Should have popped it by now. There go the balloons making their way through. And uh, right there pops the king's ability. But he's going down anyway. A uh, little bit late there. That last heal pretty much got no value because there's basically nothing left to be healed at this point. Just two or three Valks, maybe some Barbs and stuff, and that King who's about to go down. Uh, but here come the Balloons. Actually was not that far from a three-star, even with the the uh, all those Valks going down so early because um, the plan was good. Like I said, that one air defense is still up, and uh, I think just more Valks would have had a better chance of a few of them slipping into that compartment there with the uh, air defense and getting it down. But anyway, those last few Teslas, the Archer Towers, are going to shoot down the balloons like you saw. And I'll just fast forward as everything runs around. But um, I think the moral of the story is heal the Valks early, especially when nothing's tanking for them. Uh, they're not as tanky as they used to be. And uh, he had two heals, probably should drop them a little bit earlier. But good plan, good try to re-go. We'll take a look at how Jelly gets the three-star on this base. All right, so the third and final attacker is Jelly. 
Uh, he takes a look at the last two attacks from this base, comes up with a plan, and gets the three star. Um, so he's also going to use a Govaho, a little bit different than the, uh, what Rigo did, but somewhat similar. So he's coming in here uh, with a queen walk. He's going to wall breaker his queen in here, just have her dive straight in here. A uh, ton of value in this area. And uh, the way she goes in, she kind of encounters the point defense kind of a few at a time. Um, takes out these, then steps up, then the other ones farther back start to target her. So works out very nicely actually with the queen walk. Um, she's getting pretty good value. She deals with the CC troops, has the rage to keep her up. Um, everything's looking good. The one thing that kind of went weird is she did go out of the base and back around like this, which I don't think was intentional. Um, but anyway, while the queen's moving her way in, uh, comes in with uh, eight Valks. Oops, what did I do here? Uh, eight Valks, the king, a golem. Let's all that make their way in that way. So just kind of coming at this entire side of the base from two different locations in these adjacent compartments and uh, sprinkles in a few hogs here. Basically the idea is just to come at this base uh, solid from one side, jump here, uh, has I think a few heals for his Valks too, uh, keeps them healed up, and I forget what he does with the last heal, but anyway, keeps everything moving forward, takes out the queen eventually, and then just kind of reinforces with hogs as he goes. The way the queen actually reroutes, she actually takes out like all of this right here, which works out very nicely, um, but just kind of sprinkles in hogs up here, uh, up here, and like that. Just basically sending his kill squad, squad through the base like that, and then uh, reinforcing with hogs along the side. And it's not the cleanest attack, I guess, because it doesn't really have a plan for this double giant bomb set, but that's basically the last thing everything that converges on, and he doesn't need it. I mean, worst case scenario, all the hogs somehow path across it right at the end, and uh, they all get blown up, but he knows he'll still have his queen probably when he's planning the attack, still have some Valks, the king, so it doesn't have to be perfect because that double giant bomb says mainly only a threat if there's still stuff at, up after it goes off. But when it's the last thing to go down, you know, the, first of all, the odds are that you're going to lose all your hogs to it are pretty low because they'll all be spread out. They'll all be going at it at weird angles uh, just because it's the end of the attack. But also, even if they all get blown up somehow, if you still have other troops up, you can still get the three star, especially when uh, everything's going relatively quickly and uh, time isn't that big of an issue. So anyway, we'll take a look at Jelly's attack. It's kind of a very nice uh, a representation of kind of where the game's at because it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be completely planned out for everything. But if you bring the troops that are powerful in the game right now, Queen Walk, uh, Valks, Hogs, obviously, they've always been powerful. If you bring what's powerful at Town Hall 9 right now, a solid plan can get you the three star. It doesn't have to account for everything. But if it most parts of the base are accounted for, you have a little bit of leeway, a little bit of room for error, and uh, it doesn't have to be planned out tile per tile or anything. Not not quite what Town Hall 10 is right now. So anyway, we'll take a look at Jelly's attack. It'll make a little more sense when I show it. Uh, so let's here we go with Jelly's attack. All right, here we go with the attack. Uh, you can see here had plenty of time at 225, and he just started deploying his troops. So. Uh, not a big time constraint there. Uh, there goes the queen uh, wizard just to start creating the funnel for everything uh, for his kill squad and whatnot. Uh, as the queen steps up, sends in the wall breakers. They were a little bit close to the queen, so a little bit of the danger, the splash damage from the wizard tower, but they were able to slip their way through and uh, that wall is opened up. Like I said, the queen's basically taking stuff on two point defense at the time for the most part. Um, she does get a little bit low once the CC troops come out. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Because uh, she'll step up, take out that storage, and then um, as soon as she gets onto like that air defense or something, uh, the CC troops come out right there and hits the giant bomb. Has the poison for them, but uh, those Valks still are pretty quick, uh, even in the poison, and she gets pretty low. I would have popped the ability right here, especially after she takes that shot, because she is super, super low. But um, he must have had his finger just hovering over the ability, but doesn't have to use it. She goes ahead and uh, leaves the base, which I don't think was intentional, uh, but she doesn't anyway. Doesn't quite get the cannon that he probably wanted to get down and a few other things, but it's okay. He still has the golem, the Valks making their way in, uh, which we'll drop in just a moment. Those hogs were perfect. Um, I think everything was distracted. The expo's out of range, uh, so it gets free hogs there. Basically, can clear out that entire compartment. Helps funnel the Valks in even better. Uh, those Teslas pop. They do get on the king. 
uh, but the Valks will be on them in just a moment as they get through those skellies. You can see the queen basically cleared out that entire next compartment, so getting great value for the queen walk. Uh, there's the king's ability uh, making his way through. The jump's going to let everything in, uh, get to the queen right there. She's kind of on the wall, but I think she, uh, they can reach her. Had the second heal for them as they made their way through. Then, like I said, just reinforcing with hogs where he needs them. That's, I mean, this sounds kind of weird coming from a, you know, a guy who's in one hive who are planning all this stuff out. But sometimes you just got to play it by ear, you know, say, I have this many hogs. I'll start targeting defenses as I go. Obviously, he knows where the Teslas are, so he can plan that out way more. But uh, sometimes you just got to say, I'm sending my kill squad through this way. And uh, I'm probably going to send my hogs like this. But depending on how things shape up, I can send them in different ways. And he basically has targeted some defenses, just what was left up. Because like I said, at Town Hall 9, you have the power to do it. Um, sometimes you just got to send in the kill squad with some Valks, a queen walk, and uh, just deploy the hogs where they're needed. Uh, but it was a great attack by Jelly. Hope you guys enjoyed this base destruction video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Clash Manual. Uh, the, the name is One Hive Gazette, but the handle is at Clash Manual. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching this one. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectotron out.